Welcome to episode 174 of the Thunder Underground podcast. This week, we're back from Rocklahoma, and we're going to talk about it. Yes, uh, buckle up. Yeah, because this could take a while. It could, it could. We'll say that, and it'll probably be over in 40 minutes. Right? But yeah, but you know, no. Usually when we do these, they're like an yeah, hour and a half or something. An hour and a half or some shit. But you know what? You're gonna you're just gonna go along for the ride, and you're gonna like it no matter what. <laughs> That's good to know. Yes, you already told them they're gonna like it. Oh yeah, I mean, I know what's up. <laughs> 2015 was the first Rocklahoma that we did a podcast for. Yes, but we've been to all 12 of these Rocklahomas that they've yes. had in prior, and we've done reviews now. This will be the fourth one that we've done a review on. Okay. And as we mentioned last week, this is actually our third anniversary last That's right. week. That's so right. So we're now going into the fourth year of doing this as well. And Rocklahoma is always a joy to go to, whether we're doing this podcast or the eight years before we were. Yes, you know? definitely. Before we get into all that, though, we need to mention that this episode and every episode is sponsored by Vitz Screen Printing and DEB Concerts. Vitz Screen Printing, screen printer based out of Oklahoma City. They do tons of bands, t-shirts and merchandise. They do hoodies, hats, all that great stuff. They actually do our t-shirts as well. Yes, they do. Which they got us some new ones here a couple weeks ago. We had a lot of them out there at Rocklahoma. Some people got a hold of them and you can also get a hold of them on our website right now. Yes. Underground.com. Just click on the merch tab. Buy yourself one and get it and you'll see how awesome it is. And you'll be like, shit, I need to call up this screen printing right now and buy me some more t-shirts That's with right. my logo on exactly. it. Exactly. Whether it's a band or whether you've got a company or whether you just want a t-shirt that says I'm fucking rad and you want 20 of them. That's who you need to call. No, give them your money. Yeah. Yeah. Get on Facebook and follow them. V-I-T-S screen printing. Great people. Proud to have them a part of this with us. And then of course, D-E-B concerts. Just announced a couple new things here in the past week or two. Coming up, July 13th, they announced that Dokken is coming back to the Ideal Ballroom. That's right. And then they also announced that LA Guns is coming back. And wow. that's not until December. Wow. So they got this one pretty far out. Yeah. They're not messing around. Yeah, but DMB Concerts, local promoter here in town that in Tulsa that brings in a lot of these 80s in the early 90s, kind of rock, glam rock, you know, melodic rock. Yes. Heavier stuff, like docking, whatever you want to call it. But they brought in tons of great stuff in the past few years, like Tom Kiefer and Firehouse and Warrant. And like I mentioned, LA Guns has been here. They're Warrior, coming back. All those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, coming up, like I said, docking, they've got Rocket Science and Doxy with them. Both these bands, great. Glad oh, to yeah. see Doxy back on one of these bills. That's right. That's July 13th. About a little under two weeks later, Steelheart is playing at Safari Joe's H2O Water Park. That's the old Big Splash for those of you from the area that aren't familiar with that yet. But get out there. They've got a stage, and this is actually like an event at night where, you know, the water park closes, I think, at early evening. Gotcha. And then it's like a special event where you can go out there and hang out at the water park at night, watch Steelheart, get some drinks. Here's some amazing fucking rock and roll. Nice. Can I jump in the wave pool too? I, I believe you can. Nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. They can say love ain't easy and you can say I know and you can like do a body splash into the wave pool. If I did that, there'd be no more water left. <laughs> water. So maybe I won't do that. All right. Maybe I'll just spare everybody that <laughs> that pain. No, you got to do it now that we talk about it. Nice. No. Nice. Great. Yeah. <laughs> A couple of nights after that, July 28th, Bisto Blanco playing for free. Yes. They're bringing this in as a thank you for all the people that have gone to all these other great shows they've had. And Bisto Blanco's got Down for Five and Driver opening up for him. Awesome. And then later in August, we've got Faster Pussycat coming back to Tulsa at the IDL with Don Jameson along with him. And then Dead Metal Society is opening that one. Fuck yeah. And then that L.A. Gun show I mentioned is December 8th. And they haven't announced openers yet, but okay. we've got a while to figure that out. Yeah, definitely. And I don't know if you noticed this. I was going to spring this on you. Okay. That they actually, they said this on one of their posts, so it's out there. So I'm going to say it right here. But they said that in the works, they're working on bringing back Tom Kiefer. 
They're working on bringing Sebastian Bach. Really? And they're working on bringing Kicks. Wow. Kicks would be awesome. Yeah. Kicks at the IDO, that's just like the ultimate goal that of, would be, of my life at this that point. That would be bad fucking <laughs> ass right yeah. there, dude. I would love that. Yeah. One of the best live bands that most people don't even... Exactly. Exactly. Don't even pay attention to, and they should, you know? Yep. Yeah. Steve Whiteman is the fucking man. That's true. <laughs> but yes, thanks to DEB Concerts. Get on Facebook and follow Streets Gone Wild for all the updates from them. And once again, thanks to Vitz Screen Printing as well. get into this here rocklahoma let's do it so just like off the top of your head you know how would you rate this is it as good as every other one you've been to or close um, to it i mean it's just i don't think it was bad so <laughs> well it just it's just uh you know it depends on who you like really yeah i mean this is probably somebody's best fucking rocklahoma ever yeah for me the headliners weren't really you know i wouldn't jazz too much um, I love Poison, but I've seen him a million times. Right. And Godsmack, Perfect Circle, we all know what I think or, you know, whatever. But, I mean, to someone, it's it's awesome. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, on a whole, you know, just as, as it always is, vibe and, you know, all the other bands and everything going on and camping and partying. I mean, it was great. It was, it was uh, you know, what we've come to know and love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that reminds me of something I wanted to say, because, like, say someone's listening to this that hasn't really followed us, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, Rocklahoma Review. You know, a lot, you know, a lot of times when you see something in a review, it's like someone goes out there with the intention of seeing every band, mm -hmm. you know, bringing you a report yes. and all this shit. Yes. But, you know, this isn't, you know, fucking Rolling Stone or no. whatever Thank you want to call it. Well, yeah, but, I mean, it's not some publication where we're, like, doing this, we're doing this because we want to do it. Yes, we do this podcast because we like doing it. We go to Rocklahoma and we see what we want. So yep. there's a ton of bands you're not going to hear us talk about because we didn't go see them because right. we didn't care. Exactly. And, and that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's because basically... there might be some bands that you, as a listener, don't dig that you didn't go see. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's just the way it works at these festivals. Yep. And since we're not bound by anything, we just yep. do it like we would do it if we were at the festival... And not doing this podcast. Exactly. I mean, Godsmack is a perfect example. Do they suck? No. Right. But do I like them? Not really. Right. And that's that's okay. Yeah. They, I, so I didn't want to go see them. Seen them before, and they put on a good yeah, live show, I, but I, I don't. They do put on a great live show, but. I, I don't care about their music, so I didn't go see them yeah. <laughs> again, you know? And it's like, <laughs> same deal with Perfect Circle, you know? And I heard a lot of people say this show the imagery and everything was awesome. Mm -hmm. They sounded good, but it's not my thing, so I didn't go. Yeah. And I heard a lot of people say that it, even people that loved him say it kind of bored them when they left. But So, yeah, who there, knows? There's my review of Perfect Circle that I didn't see. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> right. But, like you mentioned, the the whole experience as a whole is what brings most people back to exactly. Rockwell. Yeah. Like, a lot of people, I guess, don't realize that most of these other festivals... That are in the same, you know, the same category, like the AG stuff, the Danny mm -hmm. Wimmer stuff. Yeah. Carolina Rebellion, Rock on the Range, Welcome to Rockville, all that stuff. If they do have camping, it's not, I mean, I think Carolina Rebellion does now, but it's nothing like the Rocklahoma experience yes. from people that have done it and exactly. people that have worked it. You know, even like a lot of these have... Louder in life has camping, but there's more restrictions. You see people talking about that. But Rocklahoma, it's just kind of just like a big party in a field with tens of thousands of people camping. Yes. And then also going to see a rock show. So it's like you can go to this festival and see 80 bands, but only like two of them and still have a fucking great time. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I think keeps bringing people back, even if there's a better lineup across the country or closer to them. This experience is what yes. people love. So, we got out there. I got out there Tuesday night. You got out there Thursday morning, right? Yes. 
They got their Thursday around 11, noon, yeah. something like that, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a it's a long haul, but it, even though it, it at is. times gets kind of draining towards the end, it still seems to go by pretty fast. Yes, it always does. You're, you're back and back into your daily grind before you know it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but, I don't know, just some of the things to point out before we get into the music, like, we'll say you got there. We went over to Camp Corruption, where Alan and Janelle always crank out tons of fried fish for everybody. That's right, yeah. Which is amazing, you know. I've been to that the last couple, three years now, I guess. And mm-hmm. they, you know, so a huge thank you to them for always doing that. Definitely. And, you know, that's a th- another thing about Rocklahoma. You get to know all these people. You could go out there poor and destitute and make it through this thing because people will just give exactly. you food and drinks yeah. all weekend long. Yeah, you know? people definitely have your back out there, that's for sure. Yeah. But like, and of course, we've got to give a huge shout out to, speaking of that, to Camp Rock Lacoma. Oh, yes. We which have is to. the Carols and the Voices. That's right. Good because, friends, good friends of ours. Yeah, they became good friends because of this festival that's basically right. a few years ago. And uh, same thing, you know. We hang out with them outside the festival. Yes, we do. You know, so we're always like sharing drinks and all that stuff anyway, but they hooked us up with food and yeah. random stuff throughout the weekend, even whenever we, you know, didn't necessarily need it. That's what kind of great people you are. That's you know? what you do. Yeah. <laughs> but you've got like Camp Mardi Gras is another camp that's became like a, a staple out there now. Yes. Christy Gross and Adam Richmond pull this thing off. They've always had that huge party. And this year, actually, that's where Philip Bruce got married. That's right. Yeah. I drove by in my cart over there and saw that for a minute. And um, so, congrats to him and his bride. And who else we got to mention? Um, Camp Yeager. This is the first year that they did not have a stage. Yeah. But I talked to Fred and Stacy there for a little bit. I think it was it was Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Um. And they seem pretty happy to not have the stage. I bet. I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah. But so, you know, from a personal standpoint, that was, there was a void there. But I mean, even though we'll talk about it a little bit, Mid- Maryland's Midnight Mayhem kind of filled, but still mm-hmm. just what you have grown to know over the last, I guess they've did that 10 or 11 years. You got used to Camp Yeager being right yes. there. Yep. You could see it from our campsite. Exactly. You know? But, you know. Congrats to them for that long run and for now being able to enjoy this thing again, I guess. Yeah, they, they deserve it, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I did want to point out, I made it by there a couple times, one time at night, but Camp Fuckery, which is the three lunatics guys. Yes, okay. Zach and Brett. I wanted to point this out that one time, I I worked this year. Yes. I drove a golf cart around, giving people rides and, you know, guests. In the front, guest in the backstage, all that kind of stuff. And uh, one time I gave this lady a ride and we drove by Camp Fuckery and she said, I went by there last night. She's like, I thought I'd seen it all until I went to Camp Fuckery. That was basically her quote. And I thought I needed to share that with them. Nice. Because that's a good endorsement. They're probably proud of that. Yeah, it's a good endorsement for what this place is about, right? What went on. (laughs) But yeah, and of course, Bill Ray and his crew, Daryl Stewart, all those guys, oh, always yeah. extremely welcoming. That's right. I'm not going to sit here and list everybody because I'll, I'll forget a bunch of people. <laughs> but, and of course, Alan from Ages of Rock podcast yes. made a trip down here again. He's been a few times now. Got you know I knew him well before that, but it's cool that he's gotten down here now. So look up Ages of Rock, follow them on youtube or itunes wherever you listen to podcasts and i know we got interviews with tim from clutch and a couple of the guys from hellstorm and oh that's awesome um a few other bands but yeah yeah, definitely look that up so that that stuff should be up here in the next few weeks definitely but yeah so anything else before we get into this music part of this thing i don't think so i think we should just do it all right well the first The first day of actual music from the festival was Thursday, and that's the pre-party in the Axis campground stage, and of course now we've got Maryland's Midnight Mayhem stage, 
and Camp Darkside. Yes. All these kind of kick off late afternoon, early evening. Yeah. Stuff's going on all night. So if you, you know, I'm sure some people camp out at once, see everything. Some people bounce around, try to yeah. see everything. That's what we boys try to do. Yeah. So it gets kind of hard, but we got over to Dark Side once it kicked off so we could see Solidify. Yes. Which was a main one of the main goals of mine on this because you've seen them two or three times now, yes, right? Yes, they're I've, great. I've yet to see them. So, you know, this was a highlight for me. I'll say it. Well, what would you think of them? Oh, it was great. Yeah? It was just kind of like you like you told me, you know. I mean, they're solid as hell. You know, they're 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 heavy, but they're not overly heavy. Yeah. You know, they've got that great, you know, that great vocal in the range where it's not, you know, growly or whatever. Yes. Where a lot of people like, you know, it's yeah. more accessible and everything. And they're just great dudes, too. Got, yeah. You know, hung out with Steven a few times and, you know, met a couple other guys as well. Definitely. But yeah, just really glad to be able to finally see them. Yeah, you know they they've they've they're really they've done a good job of uh, they're heavy, and you know they're not fucking around, but they also have a, an accessible sound without sounding like you know some douchey radio band, um, and the and that they've tapped into that I think is pretty special. Yeah, you know that's a that's a kind of a rare line they're riding and you know that's pretty cool that they can pull that off yeah and you can see them in tulsa in october that's right at the thunder underground fest definitely i'll be there yeah put on by scarstruck entertainment that's right at the venue shrine in tulsa i can't wait some of these other bands are going to be there as well <clears throat> yes like switchback they took the stage right after solidify yes switchback is always badass um, just a, a great band that kind of mixes old school metal with a new school sound as well. Mm. And, you know, Curtis is just such a badass front man and, you know, over on the Mar Maryland's Midnight Mayhem stage, you know, unfortunately Maryland, I don't know if she was solely putting this together, yeah. but you know, she ended up in the hospital and she missed Rocklahoma and a lot of the preparation leading up to this, someone had to take it over and Curtis stepped in and took this thing over. And for, from what I gather, you know, he kind of handled everything there in the, at the last minute. Wow. So kind of pulled this thing together. And I know he was over there. I saw pictures and stuff. I didn't see the stage until it was done, like Wednesday night or something. Mm -hmm. But he, you saw the stage. He basically built the majority of that thing himself. Yeah. He had a couple people helping him at times. But, I mean, they didn't bring in a trailer like a lot of people do. They just, he built an actual stage. And, I mean, yeah. it looked good. It was well done. I mean, this guy's been in the music business for as long, since we were kids. Yeah, you know, pretty much. Late 80s, I think. So yeah. he knows what he's doing. But yeah, so huge props to him for pulling that thing together. And, you know, hopefully this is something now with the, the void of Camp Yeager being mm -hmm. gone in the VIP area. Hopefully the stage builds up. They can do something, yeah, for sure. And then, like we just mentioned, Dark Side. We've mentioned this many times, but you got to give huge props to Chris Taylor. Yeah. Um, for building this into what it's become as well right yeah i mean because it's it started as just a small stage and then it got a little bit bigger the next year and now here we are you you hear people you know everybody knows what it is oh, yeah. you know it wasn't something like oh what's that you know it's way over there it's like everybody it doesn't matter where you're at in rocklahoma now they know what dark side is and that's what yeah that's what you hoped would happen right exactly so yeah big huge props to chris and his entire crew but yeah, so later into that evening, I know I worked for a while, so I missed some stuff, but then we got to do this interview with CJ, yes. Yeah, with CJ Pierce. So here in the next couple of weeks, you should be hearing CJ Pierce come back to the Thunder Underground podcast. That's right. That's right. For it's the second time. One. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun to sit down with him and talk for a little bit about all kinds of stuff. And then... uh Actually caught the end of Western Horn and the Hush right before that, I think. But yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Eh, eh. <laughs> starting to get hazy. I'm starting to get a bit hazy later there. into the night. But but then I I went back to camp and then I made sure to get back down there to see as above so below. Yeah. And I caught the second half of their set, and I mean it was cool. You know they, you know he talks a lot about it in that interview we did. But you know I mean they've got a good hard rock sound. Yeah. And 
they really had a command of the, you know, the crowd was really into it. And I mm-hmm. know, you know, at a thing like that, a lot of these people might not have seen him before. Yeah. People might not even known that the guy from Drowning Pool was in the band. Exactly. But, so that's a good thing because I think this crowd, you could tell, was really into what they were doing. They were really commanding the place. And yeah. So that's a good sign, you know. Definitely. Hopefully this turns into something for them. But so what are we, are we going into Friday night, I right? I think so, yeah. We're as far as talking about bands we can talk about. Yep. But so, and here's, here's another thing I want to point out that I hadn't mentioned yet, is that all these other reviews we've done, it's kind of like we're just, we can kind of bounce off each other on what we saw, but... On this thing, there's a good chunk of these bands that either you saw or I saw. Yeah. And there's a few that we crossed and we both saw, but a good <laughs> yeah. chunk of them that we're about it to talk about, split up, it's yeah. all you or it's all me. Yeah, but pretty much. I think Sunday, it's like completely halfway you and then halfway me. Yes, it definitely <laughs> is Sunday. That's for goddamn sure. Because I worked on the days and I was usually off by at six at the latest, so... I missed all the early bands, which mm. unfortunately for me, you know, the main things that I was bummed about was Seven Dust, yeah, Andrew WK, and Trivium, and well, Power Man 5000, but I actually got to hear a lot of their set. Yeah. We'll get to that later, but before we get into the festival part there, Dirty Soul Revival yeah, was Friday. They were great. At the access stage. I mean, holy shit. Talk about some just, I mean, fucking... Just straight up, you know, blues rock, you know, southern, just bearded fucking goddamn, you know, just good American rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, these guys were awesome. Um, the, the, the last three songs, um, the, the singer slash guitar player who's from Tulsa, by the way. <clears throat> he played with he played with his fingers, um, no pick, and he was just wailing. I mean, it was just, I mean, that was, and you know, I'm really, that's kind of, you know, it's a lot of what I've been listening to lately anyway, so that was just so good. They were great. Yeah, and that album, we've talked about a while back, but Brand New World. Yeah. Their album is fantastic. Badass, yeah. I mean, that's literally, if you're into any kind, like you said, bluesy, southerny, Kind of just straight up rock and roll. These guys, you got to hear this album. Yeah, for sure. But I didn't really put the rest of this in order. That doesn't really matter. You caught down for five, right? Yes, I did. I caught them later on yeah. their next performance, but yeah, I hadn't seen them in many years, so it was good to see them. They sounded great. Uh, they were all in good spirits, you know, having fun. Um, so, and they did a new song, which is fucking awesome. Um, I, you know, forgive me, the title of the new song escapes me. Um, but yeah, it was so good to see those guys again playing. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. And I caught them, I guess I could just talk about this now Yeah, since we're talking about it, but I yeah. caught them. They were one of the final bands to play when they took the stage Sunday night after Poison on the retrospect stage, D&B processing stage, sorry. And I didn't catch that the first one because I was still working, but I know that I think they got a, what, a 30, 40 minute set. And then that one on Sunday night, they got like over an hour. Oh, wow. You know, because they were the last band yeah, in there. Yeah. There were some bands on the campgrounds and stuff. But yeah, kind of like you said, you can tell they're having a great time. It's just, this is just one of those bands I'm so excited that, yeah. that they're back. Exactly. You know, I didn't really, you didn't know for a while, you know, because. Scott and Jane are real successful with what they're doing with rocket science mm-hmm. and everything. So it's cool to see this back. And like Scott mentioned, they're going to record a couple songs coming up. So yeah, that's going to be great. Really excited to see that. And I mean, the band sounded awesome. You know, psych always sounds awesome. Jane is off the, I mean, she did a solo on that night. She did the national anthem. So oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. why did I draw a blank on what it was called? <laughs> the na- <laughs> she did the national anthem. They had the flag out there, but like, as she did it, you know, she added a lot to it. And then at yeah. the end, she just went on this solo that was just, you know, I can't even describe it, but it was just fucking insane. Everybody yeah. was, the crowd over there was just eating that shit up because it was badass. <laughs> but yeah, so check out Down for Five and Definitely. Hey, listen to our previous episode, the Rocklahoma. Yes. Preview episode included Scott from Down for Five and 
It's got a ton more than just talking about Rocklahoma. Yeah. So look that bad boy up. But so, First Strike is also back. Yes. Rick Adams brought this back, and Mike DiPetrillo is back with him. This I think this is the first time in three years, maybe I heard him yeah. say at some yeah. point. But yeah, just another band that's cool to see back. Just the classic 80s, you know, rock, you know, kind of heavier rock sound, like yes. in the more classic metal sense. And, you know, they sounded great as well. And just really, you know, because I'd seen them before, but in quite a while. I think the last time I saw them was when they opened for UFO at the Vanguard, like several years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah, I know I'd seen them way back, but yeah, just really excited to see these guys back as well. And Dee Petrillo's pulling double duty with, with that and Driver. <laughs> But then who, I don't know, who'd you see first? Was it Andrew WK? Trivium, Trivium was first. first. And they were great, you know. Um, they were, you know, Matt Heath, he was really getting the crowd into it. Um, uh, they they ended with In Waves, and, you know, that was always oh, wow. cool because I love that fucking song. Their new songs are good. I mean, it was a short set, but, I mean, you know, they, they brought it, that's for sure. Did they play new, anything new? Um, oh yeah, probably they, like one or two. Um, the uh, oh god, um, the hey, the heart, heart from the hate. heart from me. They played that. Yeah. What's the fucking other new one that was a? Was it beyond, no, Beyond Oblivion wasn't a single. I can't. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but they played it. Yeah. Um. Man, and then they played. Fuck. What did they play? I can't even remember. It was a. Bl- it was just a blur. Yeah. You know, trying to go back and remember all these after you saw so much stuff. Yeah. All weekend. But yeah, they're one of those bands that never disappoint. No, yeah. I mean, they were definitely, they were awesome. And then after that, it was uh, Andrew WK. And uh, that was grand and, you know, uh, majestic like you would know that it would be. Right. Pizza, guitar, and everything. Hell yeah. So, I mean... I hate that you missed it. You would have loved it. Yeah. So it was it was super cool. I'm glad I got to see him a couple of times in the past couple yes. of years. So. Yeah. I mean, but uh, you know his uh, his wife wasn't there. Yeah, that's what Tracy jumping around, told me. jump around and stuff like she was at Riot Fest, which sucks because she's a pretty majestic herself. Yes, definitely. Yeah, get on Andrew WK's Instagram <clears throat> and you know You'll look see for what... the girl on stage and then follow. I can't remember her name. Follow yeah. her account. You'll see what we mean. It's amazing. Yes. But yeah, I'm I'm finally I'm glad he was finally at Rocklahoma. It seemed like long yes. overdue because this yes. is the type of guy that would fit all and, these festivals. And people loved it, and people were going crazy. So, you know, well, that's um, cool. Yeah. So, well then, let's see. I prevail, or was yes. that later? I don't know if that was before uh, seven. I think that was. I can't remember, but we'll talk about it. They were good. I never really, I never even really heard them before but i watched him and you know they were they were good you know the two singers one growly singer one clean singer yeah so uh you know they had some pretty heavy stuff heavy riffs going on so yeah i mean it was just uh you know one of those bands that the kids can get into <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so seven dust is next we're gonna do this twofold here yes you're gonna mention what you saw when you saw him and then we're going to talk about the brand new album, All I See Is War. Yes. Um, they fucking, they played Dirty from the new album. They played Thank You from the last one. Oh, wow. They played Thank You? Yes. Uh, they played, they, they only had like six songs. That fucking sucks. Yes, it does. And that's, I mean, ugh, we love Seven Dust, so we're not going to talk. We're, you know what we're going to say when we review a show. If, of course, it was badass. I mean, they brought it, and they fucking, they did better than most bands that went on after them. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, and the goddamn fuck, they got to put this band on at 4.30 in the fucking afternoon. I mean, these guys have been on for 20 years. They've got a great following. I mean, come on. You know, uh, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. But, I mean, you know, it didn't stop them. They put on a hell of a show anyways. I got to think they got to think that, too. They have to. Right. You know, I don't know. Well, it's they're one of those bands where it's like the balancing thing of, like, do you put them on as a headliner of a side stage? Yeah. And then just have a fucking madhouse over there? Yeah. Or do you 
you know, and show them respect of like, oh, we're headlining this stage. Yes. Or do you put them on the main stage to say you got respect because you're on the main stage, but now you're going on, you yeah. know, before yeah, 30, yeah. before some dude that's dancing around like Scott Weiland. You yes. Know? Oh, man. Like, well, yeah, you can go on we, before the tribute guy. We, we, we know what you're going to say about STP. <laughs> but, well, all I see is war came out yeah. a couple weeks ago. I think the week before Rocklahoma. It's seven dust, kind of like you said. We love them. These guys have never put out anything that's that's not above average. Yes, they're one of those bands that even if even if I didn't like absolutely love the album, I still like it. Yeah, you know. And it's like there's like that that line or something where your the wave goes up and down above it, where mm-hmm. maybe it goes a little down, but it always goes right back up yeah. on the next one. And I I love the last album, and this one. At first listen, I didn't like it as much, but after a couple of listens, it really started to grow on me. Mm-hmm. And there's just there's a lot of different elements going on with this one, I think. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times with Seven Dust albums, they all kind of have that same feel to it. But this one, you kind of hear different things, you know. Yeah. And I don't know if you caught that or if that's just me, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, I I haven't. It did seem like they were kind of doing something. You know, a little, they're kind of going in and out of some stuff. I agree. Um, I, I think, I think the first two songs are like the strongest, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, maybe I need to listen again or I'm getting some song titles mixed up, but, uh, you know, but I mean, it's, it's seven dust, so it's not going to suck. And this world is always better when there's a new seven dust album out. Right. So, but yeah, Dirty, that first song and the mm-hmm. first single. That's just classic seven dust. Yes. It sounds as good as anything they've ever done. Oh yeah, definitely. And it easily fits in with that entire catalog and it's I'd imagine it's probably gonna be a, a live staple from here out, but like you mentioned the second one, God Bites His Tongue, which is just a great title. Yeah, it is. Regardless of how which good is, of a song it is. Which is if there is a God, he's definitely biting his tongue right now. <laughs> right. Because there's some fucked up shit going on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's a great song. The, the third song, Medicated, has a really cool chorus that, you know, kind of harkens back to, I think, like some season stuff. Yeah, yeah. But even more so, like, my favorite song besides Dirty is the song Moments, which is, like, later in the album, because it totally feels like Seasons, which, to me, is a highly underrated album. Yeah. And one of my favorite, and it just, that song, it's like, when it starts, it's it's probably the most surprising song on the album to me, not, you know... Some people might hear um, not original and think that's the most surprising song because mm-hmm. it sounds a little different, a little more laid back than your standard Seven Dust. But Moments is just way more melodic and upbeat and just the way it the way it flows and the chorus like changes towards the end of it. And it just totally reminded me of Season. So I just, that just stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. Unforgiven. They did a pretty good yeah. version of that. Yeah. I'm pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would have done Unforgiven like, 3. Just kidding. Don't you think they should have done 3? Well, yeah, yeah. They could do anything. <laughs> and the the final song, The Truth, yeah, kind of bookends this thing where it's just like Dirty, where it has that classic Seven Dust feel. Yeah. So if you like Seven Dust, you will like this album. That's right. If you don't like Seven Dust, once again, you're an asshole. <laughs> because Seven Dust has arrived. Yes. Yes, they have. So. All right. STP. STP's up next. Go for it, man. Go for it. Man, I don't know. I mean, they sounded fucking great. The they, band sounded great. They did. I mean, he sounded good. And it's just like this thin line of like, I don't know. He sounded good. They sounded... They, I don't keep saying they sound good over and over. Like he... <laughs> I just can't get past the whole, you know... I've got my shirt off and I'm wiggling around like Scott Weiland thing. I'm like, just fucking do your thing. Yeah. That's why Allison Chains is so fucking great. Because yeah. William Duvall is not trying to be out, you know, Lane Staley, you know. And it's it doesn't bother me that he sounds like him. That's cool. That's what they want to do. I mean, it works for Journey. You know, other bands have pulled that off. Yes. But I don't know. You know, and the, the stuff, it was funny. The stuff they played um, was all cool. And then when they played the new stuff. Uh, Meadow and Roll Me Under were the two new ones they played. Yes. Like, Roll Me Under was one of the best songs they played. Yes. Even though I like some of these other songs better. That's right. It just, I don't know, sometimes that is that way when you have a new singer 
the newer song comes off better because yeah. that's what you, you know him as. You exactly, know? yeah. But, you know, when they played stuff like Dead and Bloated or they played Down, which I thought was awesome, you know, which songs I loved, it was great. There's no denying that. It sounded good, but I just... It's just like this thin line. I can't decide which side I'm on with, you know? Yeah, I get that. I, I, I think that... And I, I kind of agree. He's kind of doing the whole... Uh, man... It's. I mean, I. It's. I'm. 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 I'm like you. I don't know which because I don't want to talk shit. Yeah. Because they sounded fucking awesome, and they were great. But I, I'm kind of like you. It's like, dude, do your own. Don't. You don't have to act like. I don't know. Yeah, you can sound like him all you want, but you don't yeah. have to like get on stage and act like him. Too. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> I don't know, man. Because like maybe, you mentioned before, these guys, like you said. These guys deserve to be out there. They they definitely Eric do. Eric Kretz and the DeLeos because they, they... They certainly do. You know, they shouldn't have to suffer because the other singer, you know... Yeah. Fucked everything up, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And and so I'm just... It's a real... I don't know what I... I maybe... I don't know. Maybe that's... You know, uh, STP was a huge influence on this guy. And maybe that's just what... Maybe that's what happens in him when the music starts, you know? That's true. Maybe that's the only way he can do it, you know? Do you feel that? So maybe that, and maybe therein lies the explanation, and maybe I'm the asshole for, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Well, that's a good but, point but because I'm, he doesn't seem, he doesn't seem fake and ungenuine. Yes. I, I, agree. so, you know, maybe so you're maybe right. That's what it is. It just, he can't help it. That's what the, music pulls out of you because you know but i'm just i'm gonna give them i'm, I'm gonna give the whole band a pass uh, they need to be out there they sound great they sound really fucking good um so hey more power to them that new record's pretty decent so fuck it you yeah know. i mean i saw him several times with scott wyland yes and it was always good i mm -hmm. mean i never saw him pull off a bad performance so this just kind of continues that Yes, you know, exactly. and like you said, they deserve to be doing that. And they, I've seen a lot of festivals. You know, there's a second or third band down, and that's what they they should be doing. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. I mean, good for them. Yeah, I agree. Because they've got a catalog of music that not only do people love that just, I mean, they're one of those bands that you go out there and they play ten songs and you know all ten of them. Yes, you know, unless you haven't heard the new album, then you know eight of them. Yeah. You know, which is impressive. <laughs> Well, who we got next? The cult. The cult. And this right here is one of the shining moments of the whole goddamn festival to me. Yeah, what kind of doubt? They were great. They were amazing. Yeah, I can't, you know, say enough how much I love this band yep. my whole life, and I've seen them multiple times. I think I told you that last time I count. I think it was twelve times before this one, or maybe yeah. this was the twelfth one. But regardless, it. It just seems to get cooler every time. I know, I know. You know, but, you're talking about some of the most underrated fucking tandem ever, you know, with oh, Ian, know. Ian Astbury and Billy Duffy. And they make it look so easy, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, you Yeah, know, Billy Duffy is just kind of like just strolling just, around, just like yeah. he's barely moving his arms, but yeah. he's like got this wall of fucking. No rock. shit. He's the fucking. And Ian wall. Astbury, you know, it's 95 degrees out there and he's in a fucking leather jacket. Because he's you know, Ian Astbury. But he, yeah, it, cool as shit. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. It, it was, they played all the songs you wanted them to play. It was just, it was, any time I've ever seen this band, they're fucking amazing. They didn't play all the songs I wanted them to play. Well, true. Yeah, yeah. we probably could have, <laughs> well, I, w I would have, yeah. I, I could have made. You wanted a little I, devil. I want a little devil. I wanted <laughs> some Sun King. I wanted some Wild Hearted Sun. Yeah, but I don't think they ever play well her No, I know. I, I'll I wish. Never, I'll never get that in my fucking life, so. You might know. get lucky. They might do the 25th anniversary tour of ceremony. Probably not. Oh, no, that's not. already passed. Yeah, It'd sure be the 30th like anniversary. Passed. Yeah, probably not, though. But, hey, you know. Let's campaign for that. Yeah, but a girl can dream. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they played Rise, which. Yes. I'm yeah. glad that last time I saw them, the last couple times I think they played that as well. They brought that back and. You know, that's kind of an album that a lot of people probably missed because mm -hmm. it came out, what, 2000, 2001? Yeah. Beyond Good yeah. and Evil. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just a fantastic album. So Fucking I'm glad they record. still represent that a little yep. bit. But yeah, just John Tempesta. This this band is just, 
even though everybody knows who they are, it's like, I think maybe something like this, or if they're on other festivals, you know, it's not like the cult's going to get bigger than they were or yeah. anything, but maybe this will bring them back into people's minds and just realize that, you know, this is, this band's more than the two songs that a lot of, you know, the average fan That's remembers, right. you know? That's right. So, well, as far as Friday goes, I believe that was it inside, and then I came back in to see Midnight Devils. Okay. I think at that point you might have passed out, and then you I had remember. a rally. I remember that. You no, had... That was Saturday I had the rally. Oh, really? I think. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe both. No, I don't know. But Midnight Devils, you can't say enough about how energetic and just awesome this band is. I just yeah. hope, you know, I'm glad that, you know, they keep bringing them back. You know, that well, this is the first, technically the first year Midnight Devils have played. Yeah. 3D in Your Face played the last two years. Yes. So this is the third year in a row. And, you know, the three guys that are now in Midnight Devils are also the three guys in 3D in Your Face. Yes. But the 3D in Your Face has a different singer in this three-piece. Mm-hmm. Where Sam Morris, the bass player, does all the, the vocals. And I was kind of curious what they were going to do. But they played several 3D in Your Face songs. Gotcha. And, you know, we both love 3D in Your Face. I love the way this, this song sound. I love the singer's voice. But when Sam sings these, it just adds more more attitude and punch to him. Yeah. Kind of like we talked about with, like, you know, their song Memphis Mile. Yes. Anytime he took over the mic, it just, there's just way more attitude going on because it crosses that. 80s melodic glam rock feel with that punk attitude that he has, you know? Yeah. And so just adding that to their original songs and then they played a couple, I think, of their own songs. They've got an EP that's coming out. And uh, and then Sam McCaslin from Retrospect Records got up on stage with them and sang two songs. Nice. And... You know, I knew I knew he could sing. I've seen videos. I've never seen him live, but, you know, he's got several bands, you know, that he's a part of in the yeah. Vegas area. And I've watched some of his stuff before. But that dude, I mean, they sang autographed Turn Up the Radio, and he was fucking well. You know, really? Just like, it was insanely awesome, you know. And then nice. I think he sang, uh, man, I'm drawing, I think it was You Give Love a Bad Name, maybe was the second song they did. It wasn't something that needed high vocals, but. I could be wrong, but regardless, <laughs> turn up the radio was amazing. The other one was good. <clears throat> so yeah, it was really cool to see <clears throat> and uh, talk to both Sam and Chris a few times that I saw them throughout the weekend. Oh yeah. So that's just another band, people. You need to check out Midnight right. Devils. Look them up, follow them. They're from Omaha, Nebraska. So if you're in that area, they're touring throughout the Midwest a lot. Oh yeah. All right. So Saturday. Saturday. I believe the first thing you saw was Stanley's Revenge, yes, right? Yes, saw Stanley's Revenge from prior. Right. So it was good to see them. They did a fucking great set. Uh, those guys, they got riffs for days. Um, they brought it. Uh, good to see an area band, uh, you know, doing that. Um, I think it's like every time I see them, they get better live. I mean, not that they sucked before, but it's just, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like they're just, they're gaining more, you know, they're just, they're just gaining. I mean, yeah. they're, they're really. <clears throat> they're just probably getting tighter because they haven't been together a long time. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, uh, their singer's badass, you know, he's just got like a voice of a demon. It's great. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're just great all around. And, uh, I, I got to give it up to the, to the, the drunk barefoot mosher guy. The drunk barefoot mosher guy. Um, I mean, he had to be drunk or on something. He was moshing in the gravel with his with his barefoot. That's hardcore. And he was like, he was like, you know, he was getting all into it, and he knew all the words, and he was like conducting, you know, like he was a heavy metal conductor, you know, of of the band, you know, like like a orchestra conductor would do, and he was like grabbing all the dust and rubbing it in his eyes and he was just like going hard he was trying to mosh with people and getting up in people's Damn. faces and singing and shit Hell this yeah. guy was a warrior whoever you are out there you're a fucking warrior <laughs> and i hope your feet are okay yeah so yes that was quite a start to saturday oh yeah i did manage to 
drive my cart over there and pull up by the tent, and I heard one song before I had to bolt again. But gotcha. so I at least got to hear him for a minute. There you go. There you go. But glad you saw him. Yes. Well, going into the Festival Grounds, I guess Power Man 5000 was yes. the first band you saw. Saw them. They were good. I mean, we kind of hung back. There's a lot of people up there to see them. That's there, good. There was a, there was, people were really looking forward to that, I guess. That's so, cool. I was kind of wondering, you know, because that's... Oh, yeah. They had a... That's a band I've continued to follow throughout their career, but I know a lot of people kind of lost probably mm-hmm. after the first couple albums, yeah. you know, and so it's cool to see, even if it's just... Even if they're only over there for the nostalgia reason of a couple yes. songs, but oh no, yeah, they they had quite a crowd, so that was good. Yeah, I was back behind the stage, like finishing up my shift, and I heard probably half their set, mm-hmm. and it sounded, you know, it was clear, it wasn't muddled, so I got to hear at least what was going on. Yeah, you know, and it was, a, you know, from what I could tell, it was a cool set. You know, I didn't hear organ in eyes. <laughs> No, you're probably not going to hear that. <laughs> I didn't hear neck bone. Neck bone to back, bone, neck bone to back. I wish. Yeah, for all you people who, you know, know when worlds collide, you need to go back before that. Get the first record. Yeah, get the very first uh, record. Mega what, Kung Fu Radio. Yes, it is fucking badass. Yeah, like when that came out, you're like, this band's doing something different. Oh, yeah, I thought this is the one, and then... No. And then, well, then the, they changed the second album, went a little more Yeah, they went more streamlined, streamlined yeah. yeah. They got they they got away from the funky type kind of stuff. But they've managed throughout their career to like they're one of those bands kind of like the cult used to do or whoever where every album shifted the sound a little bit. Yes. And this new album that they came out with, um, was that early this year or late last year? Um I think it was early this year, but it's it's a good album as well. Yeah. You know, so check into them if you only know the, the radio stuff, you know. Well, Diamond Head. Diamond Head. Give me Diamond Head till I'm dead. That's right. I mean... To quote the mighty Pepper King. That's right. What'd you think? That was... I don't I don't know what I was expecting. I, I don't know if, like, that's one of the bands I was looking forward to the most. Yes. So it was just, like, overhyped in my head. But it, it was pretty awesome, you know, it was to be cool, able to see yeah. It. Yeah. it was good. <clears throat> and, yeah, you know, yeah. I think they played, was it six songs or seven? Six. And you know, of course, four of them were the four that Metallica had covered. Of course, you got you have to do that. Yeah. And people fucking went nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were good. I mean, I think it was, uh, they were right, they were right before Ghost, right? Yeah. Okay, so what I did was I left early, like right in the middle of Am I Evil, because that's what they closed with, right? Yeah. Did they close? Yeah. Yeah. And I went and got my seat for Ghost. I mean, I don't know why, but I just did. And I just wanted to make sure I was right there. And this guy sitting in the row ahead of me, he said, uh, "He said, man, that sounds pretty good over there. Who's doing that Metallica song? I, <laughs> I mean, knew this, that that's how this is a goddamn, I know this is a cliche fucking story, but this actually happened. Yeah. And I said, I said, that's Diamond Head. That's who did it originally. He goes, no, it's not. And I said, okay, look. There's this band called Diamond Head that came out uh, probably five years before Metallica did, and they were a big influence on Metallica. Metallica covered a lot of their songs, and that's where, you know, they kind of got their notoriety. And so that's who it is, and that's who song this is. You can Google it, I swear to God. And he was like, no kidding. And I go, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, and so... (laughs) It took me a minute, but he he believed me, so I hope he Googled it and, you know, it was affirmed to him. Yeah. So, yeah. The, 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 you know story. there's probably three-fourths of the crowd that was thinking the same thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know there were, so what do you do? Someone even said, I don't know if someone said that. Or, you can, I'm trying to remember where I was at, like, if it was at the end of it, someone yeah. was like, you know, that the majority of this crowd has probably lost on, like, what... What like, the fuck is going on? Like right what now. they could be seeing right now, or what historical significance yes. when it comes yeah, to rock or metal? Exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah, they they weren't getting it, but you know, eh, you know, as music geeks, we can only help so many people at one time. <laughs> That's right. You know, we're doing what we can, Trent. Yeah. Well, did we skip Clutch? Might have been before that, actually. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah, Clutch was earlier. Clutch was great, but yeah, I mean, it was fucking hot as shit. Yeah, that might have been the hottest point for me. Yes. <laughs> like watching a band. Yeah. Um, I went up on the uh, 
the platform above the stage. Yeah. And like they were playing at whatever time it was, was when the sun was shining, you know, at that angle right yes. onto the stage. Oh man. And I was just like dripping fucking sweat. And I thought I was going to die, but I stood there <laughs> and watched the whole thing. Cause it's fucking clutch. Yeah, it is. And that's what you do. Yeah. There were another band, like we mentioned with seven dust or whoever that, or the cult where, you know, every time you see them, you're going to get something yes. great. Yeah. And clutch is a band. It's always cool to see because you never know what set list you're going to get. You never know what set list you're going to get. Uh, Neil Fallon's a great front man. There's just meat and potatoes. There's no frills. They don't fuck around. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, and they played, uh, I know they played at least one new song. Yes. Maybe two. About yeah. Them. And uh, I did like when he mentioned the lighting guy here really sucks. Because <laughs> he kept like looking down, like putting his hand up. He didn't have on sunglasses, you know, but... <laughs> I was like, that's a clever joke that probably went over half these people's yes, heads definitely. right now. definitely. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but Clutch has a new album coming out. I think it's not until like September. Yeah. But they've already got one song out in yeah. here. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <sighs> okay, and then uh, Ghost. Yes, here we go. This is another... Uh, we're we're going to camp out on this for a minute. Right. Talk about their new album while we're, while we're here. But, I mean, this was... For me, this is the highlight of the whole festival. I think they're the best band there. You think they're number one? Uh, for me, yeah, they're number one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's in my top three or four of the festival for sure. Yeah, yeah. And they're a band that every time, another band, every time you see them, it just gets a little bit better. Yeah. Even though it changes every time because the they're another band that slightly shift the sound a little bit every time. That's right. But this... New music's even more geared towards like an 80s sound, but yes. when they played the older stuff, it still had the the same feel that it used to have, yeah. so they're not shifting everything, obviously. Yeah, totally, yeah. But, you know, it was a bigger show. That There's more band members now. They got a third guitar player. They got a backup singer, keyboard player, all that kind of stuff, or a couple of keyboard players. I don't know. Well, one of the backup singers would play keyboards sometimes. Yes, yeah, something like that. Um, so, I mean... And it's just it it was it was such a show. It was it was more than just a band coming up and doing a set. I mean, there was something going on here, and it was really cool to watch. Um, you know, it was grand. Lots of stuff to look at. So, and, and their songs are just so fucking good. I mean, they're in. You know, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I don't know what more I can say to where I'm just sound like a blubbering fucking fanboy. You know. <laughs> Well, something I was kind of glad about or surprised about was, you know, that ever since they've been around or started gaining notoriety, yeah, they've been one of those 50-50 bands where people either say, oh, I fucking love them or I hate this band. Yeah. And so I expected at Rock, Oklahoma, it was going to be that way when you yeah. talk to someone. But the majority of everybody I talked to, I heard like maybe two people say that they didn't care about care for it. They mm-hmm. might not, I don't know if they even, they might not even watched it, yeah. but everybody else was just going on about how great it was. So maybe that's a sign that I it's think starting it, to shift to where they're getting away from that polarizing level. I think it's definitely a sign. I think that, um, you know, I think that, I think, you know, here's one of your next headliners. Oh yeah. Of, you know, festivals and arenas and whatever. Yeah. I was thinking that then too, cause it's like, they're already the second band mm-hmm. down yeah. and, and just in the past couple years, they've that incline started getting steeper, and they've really gotten has, yeah. gotten up there quickly. You know, mm-hmm. I think Square Hammer probably had a lot to do with that. The radio success in this new album has already had Rats and Dance Macabre that like yes. are starting to pick up. So I think, yeah, and, give it and, give it two or three years, they're going to be like you said, headlining festivals. I think. Yeah, and I really can't, I can't tell you. I can't speak enough on how great it is that with this new record, yes, you know, there's a couple of instrumental tracks. Maybe there's, there's like seven instrumental tracks. Yeah, no shit. (laughs) I mean, and yeah. And, and, you know, it's a short record and sometimes you feel like maybe there's not enough. And, you know, that, that can be argued. I, I don't completely disagree with that, but, I really have to give it up to, to to Tobias Forge. He's really bringing some some different styles. Yeah. Some things that I think, you know, need to be out. Like, you know, 
miasma, you know, the saxophone and the proggy yeah. shit, you know, and then dance macabre. It's like total 80s. I mean, it's total fucking, I, I don't know. It's just, they're really, they're bringing some stuff. And there's some, there's some, there's some points in the record where it's almost like kind of power metal in a way. Yeah. Or like, you know, the, the folk metal. And it's just, the, and the fact that this is being brought to people on a main, you know, on a mainstream scale and they're liking it and they're, 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 they don't really know what they're listening to, you know, but they're really getting exposed to some styles that they need to get exposed to. Yeah. You know, not just, you know, let's smash our head into the cement and listen to a million five finger death punch songs and, <laughs> right. you know, fucking OD on Red Bull, you know, <laughs> constantly. I mean, there's some, you know, he's bringing some real diversity um, to audiences that that really need it right now. Yeah. So, you know, if if that's if that's what's happening, and you know, if there's a couple instrumentals, so be it. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I did notice there's nothing like too. You know, there's nothing like super super. I, I don't know if I want to say maybe grand is like you know a he is or a monstrance clock. You know. Right. But but that's fine. I mean, because it, there's still catchy stuff going on. There's still evil stuff going on. So I mean, I, I think it's a pretty good record. Yeah. Well, yeah. The first listen, I was thinking the same thing. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on here, and there's a lot of instrumentals, and I was kind of like bummed when I first listened mm-hmm. to it. But then the second listen, it all kind of clicked, and I'm like, what yeah. you said. It's like it's crazy that someone can be successful. You know, and sell records based off, you know, a couple songs. Yeah. And then there's at least, what, three instrumentals on here? Yeah. Well, one of them's the intro, I guess. Yeah, like, so two, you really. Know, and just overall, two or three of the songs are pretty laid back as well. Yeah. yeah. And then, like you said, it's like the sounds got that, you know, with Rats has the 80s rock sound. Dance Macabre has the 80s pop sound. Yeah. So it's like... It's just amazing that in this day and age that that's successful to me. Yeah, and know, I'm kind of kind of glad about it. You know. Yeah, I, I mean, same here. I mean, I think Pro Memoria is to me that's one of my favorites because I love that chorus. Yeah. You know, and it's 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 pretty dark, and I think you know that's that's something that you need on a ghost record. Yeah. Um, Faith is great. Yeah, Faith is probably my favorite yeah, one right now. Yeah. Like it opens. It sounds like Avatar. Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? But, and they, when we saw them at Rocklahoma, they opened with, I think, Ashes and then... Right into I Rats. I think they opened with Ashes, right? Yeah. And yeah. then it went into Rats, Rats yeah. yeah. So they opened with the first two tracks on this. Yep. And then they also played, um, besides Dance for Cobden, they, play, they played one of the instrumentals, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, I don't know. But, yeah. And then, of course, when we saw them, they played Ritual. Yes. And Year Zero. And yeah, he I mean, is all the stuff you want to hear, you know. I'm sure you're glad they played He Is. Oh man, I loved it. <laughs> that was so good. Dude, I was I okay, look. I was pretty Oh, there's a ghost right there. See. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was pretty lit. So I was I was singing along and I was really getting into it. I was kinda that guy. Yeah. Kind, just kinda though, not fully. Don't don't worry. <laughs> But, I mean, they're highlight of the whole fucking weekend for me. They're impeccable. Yeah. Yeah, they sounded phenomenal. Yes, they did. Well, after that, I saw, later that <laughs> night, I saw Dead Metal Society. Yeah. Seen them many times. Like we talked about, Nine was on the previous yeah. episode. Let's yeah, go back and check great. that out. Yeah, they never disappoint. You know, you know what you're getting. You know, they're a tribute act to the 80s. And it's not, you know, they cover everything from... The glam stuff to the Metallica and Iron Maiden yeah. type stuff, and um, I remember at one point they're playing something. I can't remember what it was, and it ended. And I'm not bullshitting you. You can ask Tracy or I'm trying to remember who else was over there. Um, <laughs> oh, you were there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I said they kicked ass. <laughs> yeah, you were so saying right next. I thought you were saying somewhere else, but no. Holy fuck. Anyway, remember I, I yelled smooth up in you? Just like, yes, and they... As a joke, and then like... They did it. Two seconds later, he screamed smooth up in you, and like three people in front of us turned around like, what the fuck? Who's this fucking guru? How's he fucking know that shit? Yeah. 
So then after every song I was had drank enough that I started screaming song titles but never got another one right. You, you so. were drank enough? Yeah. Drunk enough? Both. Oh, yeah. Well, I was too, so <laughs> I guess I shouldn't talk shit. Yeah. But yeah, Dead Metal Society, they're a band that if you ever get a chance to see them. Oh, you got to. They play in the Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas area a lot, so yep. get out there, check them out. And then they played November Rain, even though Nine said on our podcast they wouldn't. Yes. So calling him out for, for that. <laughs> That that lie that he had. <laughs> anyway, was that everything for... Well, later that night... I mean, I know I saw other stuff. I just can't freaking remember what. Yep. <laughs> but on Midnight's... Maryland's Midnight Mayhem stage, I saw Trip 6 for a couple... Two or three okay. songs. And that's yeah, Paul I London's saw, new band. I saw something. Goddamn, I can't remember what it was. It was probably that, because I think yeah. you were hanging out with us. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, it was cool to see Paul London back. You know, he used to have London's Dungeon. And yeah. Trip 6, you know, it was kind of... Same thing, has that great, you know, hard rock sound, not too heavy, a lot of, you know, melody going on. It sounded cool. You know, when I saw him, I think it was a couple covers, but, you know, just glad to see him back out there and doing that. So check out Trip 6 if yeah. you get a chance. All right, so moving into Sunday. Yes. You saw some bands on the Axis stage, right? Yes, I did. Uh, first off, I went... At 140, because that's when it said Oddfellas was to play. And they were already done when I got there. I got there like at 141, and <laughs> Jenny Wood was already on stage. Maybe they played a 30 second set. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> <clears throat> something got mixed up there. That sucks. Yes. I mean, Jenny Wood was great. Don't get right. me wrong, but I really wanted to see Oddfellas. Um, but yeah, a little different for the Rocklahoma crowd, you know, a little bit more maybe laid back or, you know, uh, you know, alternative, but I mean, it was great. So, you know, nothing wrong with that. Right. She's got a great voice. Um, she had a cool look, so it worked, you know, and then the Grizzly band, um, they came on stage and they're from Houston and, uh, real rootsy, you know, kind of Americana kind of stuff. Like I like, you know, yeah. Um, they would totally fit on the on a bill with like social distortion and Lucero or something oh, okay. like that, you know. Um, it was you know the singer, guitar player, bass player, drummer, and then a the guy playing pedal steel. So it was pretty cool, and you know. So, and, and we hung around for a couple of those songs, and then, um, and then I think ten years was up. Yeah, it's a, um, because yeah, you were working still, so. Yeah. Well, so that's another, like you mentioned, that's another band that's not typical for Rocklahoma, but I noticed that Axis have done that the last couple of years where they're on, on Sundays, Sunday, yes, yeah. It's a little more laid back, you know. Back or. Either that know, kind of stuff or bluesy yes, or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Which Odd Fellows would have worked good for that. I don't know if yeah. they, you said, yeah, they, they played, so they were there. Yeah, maybe they were there because I recognized the singer guy and maybe someone and their just, merch was set up and they're all taking pictures of people. So I don't know what. Maybe I, someone had to cancel so yeah, they something. took their spot or something. I don't yeah, know. Exactly. So who knows? But, um, you know, 10 years is great. They're a lot better than I thought they would be. I, I don't really know much about them and that's not, it's not classically my thing. Right. But I really enjoyed them. Um, I, they did a really cool cover of Heart Shaped Box by Nirvana, where it was kind of like they, you didn't know what they were doing until I was like, hey, I recognize that one line. And then you figured out what they were doing. Oh, okay. So they kind of made it their own, and they had some pretty good energy on stage. So, I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I saw them open for Alice in Chains a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, I think they, I mean, I wouldn't even mind if they'd played longer than what they did. Really? So, yeah, and, and, and this is again one of those things. What the fuck do I know? I'm a I'm a dumbass because everybody around me was singing the songs and loving it. So <laughs> I mean they're doing something right. So right, you know. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and then, then now we get Candlebox. Um, I it's, I hated the. See, this is how this is how geeky we are. I hated that you missed it. <laughs> right. I was thinking that the whole goddamn time. Because they, it, it, they sounded pretty good, man, and you would have enjoyed it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, you cover me far behind. They did all that shit. Um, 
And I mean, I don't know. They play simple lessons. <sighs> I best know. friend. I don't. <laughs> uh, they played one of those. They played one of those kind of deeper cut songs. The second album stuff. Yeah. yeah, second or third, and I cannot remember which one it was. Um, by then, I was starting to fade. All right. But I, I don't know. You you probably would know better. I don't know what um, Kevin Martin's got going on band wise now. I don't know who's in or out or whatever the fuck. Um, but they all sounded great. You know, I, I think honestly, I whoever's know whoever's there, they they're, just they're killing it. So they did a couple shows with all the original members, but that's not the actual lineup right now. Yeah, but like the 25th anniversary or no. Yeah, 25th anniversary of the first album. They did a show in Seattle and a show in like Arizona. Yeah. And that was just in the past couple months. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's like him and one other guy, if I'm right. I got you. But we, he sounded great, right? Kevin Martin. Oh, fuck yeah. He sounded Every amazing. Every time I see him, he still he sounds fucking yeah, I mean, he, perfect. He, he sounds like he, you know, it's like 1995 all over again. Yeah. He sounded great. And, uh, but yeah, aren't like the drummer and the bass player, aren't they like fucking lawyers and math teachers and shit now or some shit? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, so. I can't really blame him, whatever. Yeah. But, no, Candlebox is great. And then, that's where, that's where you take over. I thought you saw Nonpoint. Oh, fuck, I did see Nonpoint. Damn it. I'm so, slipping on my old age. But, real quick, for me, just like I said with Paramount 5000, I heard a lot of Nonpoint. Yes. From behind the stage. And, you know, we talked about them before, because yeah. Elias Soriano was on his podcast. Yes. And they're just... They're another one of those bands that I think a lot of people that like metal just kind of brush off. Mm-hmm. But they're they're really strong well, live. Yes. And they're a really great fucking live band. You now, know? See, that's what I... I had never seen them before, or if I did, I can't remember. It's been so long. But what you just said is totally true. I think, and I'm, I'm guilty of it maybe sometimes myself, you know, you might think, oh, that's new metal or whatever the fuck stupid shit that, you know, um, fucking meatheads like us think, <laughs> Meat but you see it and you know, I'm like, fuck, these guys are fucking badass. I mean, they were killing it. It's like 300 degrees outside and they're jumping around and they all got long sleeves and pants on and dreadlocks <laughs> that probably weigh a ton. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. They're killing it. And you know, I heard several people they had say a, they were just like the crowd was going nuts. Oh yeah, the, I mean, again, we were a little farther back because we were just like, you know, Sunday was getting us. <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, there's an insane crowd, a big crowd for Nonpoint, so that was awesome. That was great to see. Yeah, cool and, that they're. I think that's only the second time they've been at Rock. Yeah, Island. I'm glad I finally got to see them after all these years. Yeah, that last record they did was awesome. Yeah, you know that we when they when we interviewed them, they were on the tour for that. That was a really good record. Yeah, so that should be that should be on that cycle to where they should have a new one this year. Yeah, but, yeah, I, w- I would imagine. But so Lynch Mob hit the side stage probably after them next okay. band around, and uh, I didn't. I should have looked up the singer's name, but this is probably one of the first shows he's one of the early shows he's done because mm-hmm. Robert Mason did some of those shows. After only Logan left. Um, but the new singer, I don't know if he's permanent or feeling what, but he he sounded great. He sounded a lot like Oni Logan, but higher. Yeah. Like his voice or his register was higher. So it kind of gave it more of a, you know, I don't know what to say. You know, it, it sounded enough like Lynch Mob that we're, you wouldn't notice if you weren't like yeah. a huge follower, like, yeah. you know, we were or something. But of course the band sounded awesome. Sean McNabb wasn't there. He wasn't. And this is, uh, this just the reminded fuck? me as I'm talking this out, I forgot to look this yeah. up, but I'm, I'm Just a little ways from the trip. stage and I'm like, well, Sean McNabb's not there. And all of a sudden I'm like, holy shit, that's Michael Devin from Whitesnake. And the more I kept looking at it, I'm like, I've got to look this up because I think it's him. And then later on, that night, I ran into Melanie and Jules, and Melanie was like, was that Michael Devin from Whitesnake? <laughs> so I'm not the only one that was thinking yeah. it, if it's the case. So was it? I had, still haven't looked it up. I uh, just well, you need... thought who, of this who, as who, I said who, it. Who's playing drums for him? Um, fuck, I forget. Is this, I think, I can't even remember at the show. Was it, well, who, we saw him last time. It was that, what's his name? Dean. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Dean. Yeah, Dean. That, that used to be in Bullet Boys. That's right. So but I think. I, I don't think he's there anymore. Oh, he's not? I don't think. Oh, okay. So it's like an entirely different band it now. It could be. Fuck, I don't know. But that's the way Lynch Mob has been throughout happened, history. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
and it can be since the focus is on George mm-hmm. Lynch and then the songs. You know, they obviously just stuck to the first album, and then you know they're always going to play something docking, which I thought was really cool that they at a festival like this, you know, where you want to kind of reel in some people that might not know you, mm-hmm. and the, the docking songs they played were. Heaven, heaven comes down, and Mister Scary. Nice. I'm like, that's badass because it's almost just like, well, fuck you if you don't know who we are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because your average rock fan probably doesn't know those Dawkins songs. Yes. You know, if they're like under 35, you know. Exactly. And those are like way better choices than some of the other stuff they could have picked. So I was really glad to see that. Mm-hmm. Of course, Mister Scary yeah. is unbelievable, and so they sound great. So if moving forward, if this is their singer, you know, I mean, it's going to continue to be good. Right on. Then, of course, Tom Kiefer, one of the highlights throughout the weekend for me. Yeah. Never disappoints. He's even, like I said this on the their preview thing, even though he's, everybody knows Cinderella. Yeah. He's still criminally underrated, in my opinion. Yeah. No, in, you're right. You're, in, you're definitely right. In fact, earlier that day, I was given some, a lady a ride. It was like a lady and her son. And she's like looking at her thing and as we're driving she asked me if I knew who Tom Kiefer was yeah. and I'm like she's like I know everybody on the bill except him and I'm like well he's a sing- he was a singer for Cinderella and it just blew her mind yeah. she's like holy shit you know she was so excited now and I'm like how do people not know this yeah. <laughs> I know I know but I guess that's just the way the world is right that's the way it goes <laughs> yeah but yeah he played obviously all Cinderella songs and then he played Solid Ground from his solo album nice um, you know, he sounded awesome. He has the two, his wife and the other backup singer. And then, you know, did all the, you know, in the short set he had, he did all the classic stuff he could. And then like halfway through the set, he played Nobody's Fool mm-hmm. and Lizzie Hell from Hellstorm came out. Hell yeah. And sang it with him. That's awesome. Which is, you know, what I kind of expected to happen since she was going on mm-hmm. basically an hour after him. Yeah. And she did that version with him on... The re-release of a solo album. Yes. So yeah, she came out and did that, and that was awesome. And but yeah, Tom Kiefer, he's just fucking badass live. Nice. I hope, I hope the DB concerts bring him back to the Ideal Ballroom again. Yeah, I'd like to go to that. We'll yeah. definitely be there again. And then Hellstorm, I cut just a couple songs of. Um, and they're a band that I've always liked, but I just kind of lost touch with, and like. When I when you see him live though, it kind of reels you back in mm-hmm. because she's just so fucking. She's just one of those people that like. You've it, it's happened slower than I thought it would, but I think, ten years from now, you know they're gonna be. They might not be the level of like a Foo Fighters or a Vince Simple, but they're gonna be up there where yeah. they're like, at least the second band down on these festivals. Yeah, they need to be. This for band sure. can be in for the long haul yeah. because she's a fucking powerhouse singer. She's obviously got the look as well, yeah. and the crowd just fucking goes ape shit for this band. Yeah, you know, and her brother is just a showman as that well. That guy's an insane drummer, and yeah, so you know, more power to him. I need to like reel myself back in and check him out more. Yeah, but you know, because I was really into those first couple albums, and then just kind of lost touch. But it, it, did you ever, like I told you to do? Go look up the YouTube videos of them when they were kids. I forgot about playing that. At, like. Street festivals and carnivals. I forgot about you that. You have to fucking do it. It's fucking, it's insane. It's hilarious. It's classic. You said it's her and RJ and like their dad? Their dad, something? yeah. <laughs> You've got to see this shit. <laughs> You'll thank me for it. Yeah. Well, after them, Cheap Trick, and this is my number one of the whole festival. Really? I yeah. figured it would be. And I kind of... So, you know, that's what I talked about going in. It was my most excited to see, and they lived up to it because this is only, what, the third or fourth time I've seen them. Yeah. And they're just an unbelievable live band. They just command the audience, and even though, you know, half that festival audience might only know, like, five singles, you know. Yeah. The other five songs they played, you know, people are just into it and going nuts, even if it's, like, a deeper cut or something, and... They, of course, played all the hits, and towards the end, they played, actually, it was the last song they played, Surrender, and they brought out Hellstorm, um, Pop Evil, and uh, 
I think a couple of the guys from Lunch Mob, maybe. Was it Tom Kiefer's band? Yeah, and then Tom Kiefer as well. Yeah. And they all sang. Oh, that's cool. Sang Surrender with him. And even, I think Tom Kiefer took one of the verses and maybe Lizzie Hell did. And then the rest of them were just doing backups. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Um, Tom, it's Tom Peterson. Yes. Yeah. Tom Peterson had like a extended bass solo, which was unbelievable. Cause he, he plays like a 102 string bass. Yeah. <laughs> and he had on his big ass hat and his scarf thing. And then he yeah. played that and then he did a song where he sang it. And then, you know, just, yeah, they're the, yeah, the quintessential fucking rock and roll band. Yeah, I mean, like, they're one of the best. Yeah. There's a reason why they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame now. Yeah, they should have been there 10 years oh, prior. Oh, fuck yeah. Yep. Well, Poison closed it out. And like you said, you've seen them a million times, you know what you're going to get. But mm-hmm. they just... It doesn't ever get old to me. No, yeah, because it's always fun. It's, it's always fun. It's crazy that like Poison's the type of band that so many people, especially that like, like metal or something, are going to rip on. Mm-hmm. But they went out there at a festival full of like tons of other bands and fucking owned almost every one of them. Yeah. And they maybe not cheap trip, yeah. you know, maybe not ghost or whatever, but they, they headlined the thing. The place was fucking wall to wall packed. Yeah. And like, I went down in the pit and I couldn't even get further than like 10 foot into the pit yeah. without like pushing through people, you yeah. know? And it was just like, everybody was out there watching them. They put on a show. CC DeVille did a long ass solo, which I know you would hate, but it didn't, it wasn't the swallow this live solo. It was, fucking, so it's probably good. It was fucking cool. You know? And then like partway through, I go back over to Tracy and Maggie's seats and like Mike Thrash is over there. We're hanging out. Kevin and Rachel Graham show up and Kevin Graham's just like going ape shit. And he's like, I can't believe we're fucking watching poison together. And I'm like, like the biggest Slayer fan on earth is going That's nuts awesome. for for Poison. So that shows you right there. That's what it's about, that, man. That this band is a party band, you know. That's what it's about. Yeah. And it was a perfect band to like close out the headline main stage for this thing. That's you awesome. Know? And that was, you know, pretty much it. I mentioned I saw Down, you know, we already mentioned Down for Five. Yeah. And I talked about that. But that was the only thing I saw after that besides that I remember I saw the band Soul Crisis on Maryland's Midnight Mayhem stage. And okay. They're out of Oklahoma City, and I've seen this name for a long time, but I've never seen them that I know of. And I caught the end of their set, I think about three songs, me and Tracy saw it, and they just, they were really cool. They had a, it was a real heavy kind of metal sound, but they also had like some industrial electronic elements in there as well. Yeah. And, you know, they were throwing down. That was like, that night was fucking hot. Like even most of the nights after the sun went down, yeah. it felt good. But yeah. that Sunday night after the sun went down, it was so fucking hot. <laughs> you know, even I felt that at like two in the morning. But, you know, these guys were over there throwing it down in the heat on that stage. And so it's cool to see them. So look up Soul Crisis. Fuck yeah, do it. And and again, a big shout out to Curtis for pulling that thing together. And I hope oh, yeah, next year sure. it's even bigger. And so if you're in the GA area and you didn't know that there's a VIP stage because Camp Yeager was gone next year, you know now. That's right. To look for it. You got Maryland's Midnight Mayhem stage, and if you're in the same thing in VIP, you know, wander over the at least once. You got to get over to Dark Side. Yes, it's yeah, a, definitely. It's a freaking party. They have a big, huge tent. Put on a great show, and of course, access is in between the two, so you got a point to stop and hang out as well. That's right. You got to love it. Yeah. So there you go. We another, did it. Another That's one. Rock, Oklahoma, 2018. Yeah. In the books. Twelve in a row. Yeah, twelve in a row. So is next year 13 going to be lucky or unlucky for you? It's going to be lucky. I I, I thrive off that unlucky shit. They'll be lucky because Ugly Kid Joe's going to be there. I fucking wish. I've said that at the end of every review episode we've done, I think. Well, they need to be. I was thinking because I listened to Menace of Sobriety the other day. Nice. And I really wish. I, I've never, ever seen them ever in my fucking life. You haven't? No, and never. They're one band I've never seen. Well, that's right. I've only seen them the one time. Yeah. Back in like 93. Yeah. So it's just, but they, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame them. They, you know, their former drummer was their headline. And yeah, true. Night. They, they, they probably couldn't fill a backyard here, but they can go to Europe and, and fill places. So they go play Europe. Then I get that. Yeah. So people, people don't get it here. Hey, well, you, another band that has always been hanging around Europe, I noticed is starting to jump on more and more of these festivals is Monster Magnet. I know. 
I just yeah, saw that they announced Louder, Louder Than Life, Life and they're on yeah. that one. And like last year, they were on two or three of them as well. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we'll get lucky one day and they'll be on that side there stage at fucking three thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, no shit, no shit. <laughs> so yeah, we did it. There, there you go. Yeah, that there's what it is. Yeah, get on the bottom of this Facebook page or wherever you're listening to this at and comment. You know, who were your favorite bands yes. you saw? Because I'm sure you saw Godsmack, thought they're awesome, or I'm sure you saw, I don't know, you saw some bands on the campground stages that we didn't. Yep. Let us know who was awesome. That's right. Let us know who you liked. Yeah. And so we've talked about, like we said, Elias, the singer of Don Point, John Connolly, the guitarist of Seven Dust. Um, Midnight Devils. Yeah, Midnight Devils. Down for Five. Down for Five. I'm trying to name off bands we've had on this podcast before that were there this year. Uh, There's been a lot of bands. First strike, past. Mike DiPatrillo has been on there a million times. <laughs> a million times. That's um, right. Fucking <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. The campground stages had like Fist of Rage oh, and yeah. Grind and yeah, oh, yeah. Some of these bands we've had on. I mean, but just yeah, go back through previous Rocklahomas, like the early days when it was all glam. Guys from those that have been on our podcast we've had on guys from Warrant. Got on guys from Firehouse, Trickster, Bullet Boys, Lillian Axe, Taiketo. We didn't mention that um, Chris McCarville from there's the basis for Dockin. Yes. His band played out there. Max but Explosion. I sold out and I had to see Lynch Mob. Well, Sorry, and all the chaos. Asked. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's after you had. Fuck, I. You had went out. But we got sick and we're like, fuck this. Yeah. But yeah, so check out Max Explosion. Really cool band. And yeah, just like totally go through it all. Kiss, um, Europe, yeah, Death Angel, Corrosion Conformity, Saxon, Black Star Riders, Bruce Kulik from Kiss and Grand Funk Railroad. You know, look all this stuff up. EatThunderUnderground.com. All of them are on there. We're on YouTube iTunes, Stitcher, Google Music, all that great stuff. SoundCloud.com backslash Thunder Dash Underground. <laughs> and then Instagram, follow us on Facebook. Get on Patreon.com, look up Thunder Underground, throw us a couple bucks. Yeah, that's right. We'll use it to buy um, some tactical firefighter. What the fuck's that say? Tactical <laughs> combat firefighter American India Pale Ale. There you this go. This is new. I'm trying it. Fuck it. I mean, it's got a cool can. It's got a firefighter with... A hose in one hand and a machine gun in the other. So if four of I mean, you that's donate... Gr that's great in our climate right now. Yeah, if three of you donate $3, then we can get another six-pack of this. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, I think this was a $30 <laughs> for a six-pack, so... <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't know. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, so we need more of this shit, so... It's kind of like the, what, the, what the guy on Starship Records commercials used to say. Send me your money. That's right. Send us your money, please. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, seriously. If you listen to this in a couple bucks, it goes and helps out all kinds of stuff we're doing. And That's like right. we mentioned early on, our sponsors, Vit Screen Printing <clears throat> and DEB Concerts, both help out a ton. We're hugely grateful to both of them. And yeah. That's right. If you look, look, if you become a patron for just a dollar a month, just for that... Trent will, send you, Trent will send you a good morning text every morning. <laughs> every morning. Not for a dollar. It needs to be $7 for the good morning text. Okay, $7. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> right on. Does that cover this one? I think so. I think we're done. All right. Well, we like we mentioned early on, CJ Pierce from Drowning Pool and As Above, So Below will be on here coming up. And we've also got this one we've talked about for a while with Sean McCoy of Boba Flex. That should be the next one you hear. Yes. And we've got some other stuff in the works. But As until, always. Yeah. I'm going to see John Fogarty. He's going to see Yanni. So until next uh, time, we'll talk about that stuff, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Until next time. Thunder Underground, y'all.